Well, good morning and welcome to New Life Community Church. My name is Doug, and uh, I want to welcome you and, and invite you to, to stand up and join us here uh, in singing praise and worship to God. We're going to start with a song called Chosen Generation, and this is a song purely about saying we know that we are called by God to go out and do extraordinary things on, uh, in His name and, of course, in His power. So let's sing that. We are chosen generation rise up holy nation god we live for you you have called us out of darkness into light so glorious god we live for you What a great song about community, because really that's what it says. We, did you notice that again and again? We together. God has formed you to be part of his family. And what a joy it is to come into this place every week, that discipline of coming and joining together with fellow believers or those who are exploring this thing called Christianity and to be able to come under this one time, it's one hour, and refocus. I know I need it, and I'm so glad to see you here today because you had a lot of options of things you could have done. But as we come into God's presence, indeed, He is holy. And I don't know what baggage you come in here with, but I know that all of us at some point this past week failed. We had mistakes we did, choices we made that were not God-honoring. But here's what God says. It's not like, well, it's a wonder you showed up today. That's not what God says to us. No, instead, He says this. Peter writes this. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Right? We humble ourselves under God's mighty hand. And this is what he says, so that he will lift you up. 
right? If we come with pride, God's not able to do anything there. But when we come humbly before him, he's the one who then lifts us up, not our circumstances. And then Peter says this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So if that's, maybe that's what you needed to hear today. But we've got a lot more to offer yet in this next hour. Let's pray. God, thank you that your presence is here. Thank you that as your people gather, you said, Jesus, to your disciples, and you say it to us, where two or more are gathered, I will be there with you. And so, Lord, whatever we come in here with today, we want to cast that anxiety upon you because we know that you do care for us. Oh, we may not feel it right now, but Lord, out of obedience, we want to experience you in this next hour. So be real. Be real in our lives. Be real in our church as we give ourselves to you in worship. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Cause Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He was.
every treasure, take this life. Everything's on. Everything's on the altar now. No holding back, no holding out. In view of your matchless sacrifice. Take every treasure, take this life. All that I am for all that you are, my Lord. All that I have for all that you are, you're the pearl beyond price, greater than life. All I have it all, have it all, the pure joy of knowing you, my Lord. Lord, we do want to give ourselves completely to you in this moment and in our lives in general. Uh, we know that we are not made to just sit here and, and uh, find some thing to keep us busy until we die. But Lord, we know we're, we're supposed to be doing your work. We're supposed to be loving others, showing other people the hope that comes through salvation, which is only through Christ Jesus. And we pray that you allow us to, to have the boldness that it takes to go out and say those words to others. And we pray this in your name. Amen. You can be seated. I get the honor being the, the youth pastor here of um, going through profession of faith with the students that we have in our church. And one of them in particular is Samantha Wegg, who's here with us uh, today. And what's really neat is she had a, a lot of family that was able to come out as well to celebrate with her. And uh, that's not the only reason they're celebrating. Actually, uh, your grandparents, what is it, Wes and Carolyn, um, they're celebrating their 54th wedding anniversary. So that's, that's awesome to begin with. A huge, uh, give them applause. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. And it's a great example as well. Um, so Sam, Samantha, I know you it's Sam. We're going to use your full name though, Samantha. I'm going to go through this and, uh, and of course I'm going to ask you some questions and then ask you to respond to them. So today we're happy to celebrate God's grace in the life of Samantha Wegg. When she was baptized as a baby, she was welcomed into the covenant family of God. Now Samantha has expressed her desire to join the family at the Lord's table. So today, she will respond in faith to God's promises in baptism, telling, tell us of her faith in the Lord Jesus and commit herself to grow in that faith. Samantha, you expressed your interest in professing your faith to your parents, went through some sessions with myself 
and a few others, and, and to talk about your love for Jesus, and the, we talked about the Apostles' Creed and the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer. And then you shared your story of profession with uh, myself and with um, Chuck Chapin, your shepherding elder. And now you stand here today public, to publicly profess your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And we're excited to see what God has given you, that God has given you this profession. So a reminder to you, congregation, uh, that profession of faith at the age that Samantha is, and, and how old are you, Samantha? 12. She's 12. So it does not yet carry the, the full uh, responsibilities of, say, if she, she, right now you couldn't be called to be an elder or a deacon. That would have to wait until she was 18, and, and, uh, and as well as voting and things like that are not a part of, of this yet. But once you do turn 18, then all of those rights and responsibilities are uh, yours to accept. So, Samantha, in the presence of God and this family of faith, respond to the following questions. And wait until I get through all the questions. Do you believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Do you, relying on the grace of God, promise to confess Christ publicly before others, to serve Christ daily, and to walk in Jesus' way? Will you continue to learn more about God and his word? And will you continue to serve him with us in your life and worship? And will you allow us, your church family, to encourage you in your faith and hold you responsible to your commitment to Jesus and his church and to seek those things which make for unity, purity, and peace? And what is your answer, answer, Samantha? I do, Christ helping me. All right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I now welcome you to the privileges of participation in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I have a certificate here for you to commemorate this moment. And you can hang on to that. There you go. And just as a reminder for this day. And now at congregation, I ask you to stand because we all have a responsibility in this as as well. So family of God, do you promise to, to support Samantha and her family with your love, encouragement, and prayers? And if yes, please, please respond, we do, God helping us. Now I'd like to, to ask Chuck Hilt to come on up and, uh, and uh, give a prayer for Samantha. Bow your heads and pray with me, please. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for this special day that Samantha comes up here and publicly publicly and uh, tells everybody that she loves you and she ex- and she has Jesus Christ as her personal savior. I just thank you for young people like this that are willing to come right up and and uh, start serving serving you Lord she's already up there on the praise team and and helping out up there and 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 Lord we think that's neat. I just pray that you'll continue to nourish her spiritually uh, with her gifts and help her to be a shining light for you everywhere she goes, in school and everywhere. And Lord, we thank you for this special day. This we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, with that, would you give a hand to Samantha and encouragement of this choice? that you can go ahead and be seated as we uh, have the opportunity now for a prayer of the people and this is an opportunity if you're here as a guest where we just spend a few minutes in prayer because prayer is such a central part of who we are as a church we realize not only in our life together as a congregation but as individuals we're dependent upon a God who acts he doesn't just look down at us and say good luck with life no he's a God who's intricately um, involved in our everyday life You know, we recognized yesterday, of course, the 4th of July and a great celebration day of independence as a nation. And uh, I'm sure your celebration and recognition of the freedoms that we have here today, you know, recognize that they come at a cost. Um, No freedom is given for free. And uh, so for those that have served, for those that uh, have laid down their lives so that we may enjoy our freedoms, and even for those of you who may be serving even now uh, in our nation, we thank you. We thank you for those freedoms. 
Perhaps this past week you also heard the uh, Supreme Court's ruling on same-sex marriage is now legal in all 50 states. And you know here in Idaho we have, we've gone over this issue numerous times. But for me as a pastor and for us as a church, I think it's important for us to remind ourselves where we stand as a, as a church as well as uh, where we stand as a denomination. And out in the lobby, we have our commitment to preserving marriages and I'd just like to, to read the, the front part of that. You can pick these up. It talks a lot about how we're committed in, in marriage relationships to help in times of struggle. We want to be sure to be celebrating uh, marriage as well. But it says this, God designed marriage to reflect the beauty and permanence of Christ's loving relationship with his bride, the church. Therefore, he established marriage to be a lifelong, exclusive relationship between one man and one woman. And God also designed it to provide mutual companionship through life's joys and difficulties, to create stability for raising and nurturing children, and to give strength and cohesiveness to society in general. And so, you know, for me, I said to myself, okay, well, that's my stand, and now my nation has taken a different stand, but how do, how do I live? How do I live as a Christ follower, bringing honor and glory uh, to the Lord in this particular situation or case or example of what our nation has decided? And, you know, I want to say one thing is we should not hold our tongue as far as what we believe. Um, and I think the judges ruled in that too, in the minority opinion said that we still have the freedom of religious act and we're to be you know, what we're convinced of, of what God's word says. And I just reminded that Jesus said, you know, you're in the world, right? You, you're living in the world. This isn't heaven yet. So you're still going to deal with issues in life that go contrary to your beliefs and your understanding of God's word. But, but we're to live in it as Christ followers. And so we can't also throw stones. You know, we just can't, we can't do that in Christ's love. We cannot throw rocks. It's up to us. And maybe, maybe this is where we're at. You know, we just did that whole series on Song of Solomon. And we held up the beauty of marriage in the way God intended it. And maybe that's our role, is not to throw rocks, but instead to provide and show and demonstrate what a real covenant marriage truly, truly is. And, and sharing those stories of yours that you have, how marriage isn't easy, it's work, it's hard, it's difficult, but with God's help, he gets the glory. And, uh, you know, for even us as, as a church, of our history. We want to hold true to the, the Bible and how it's defini definition of marriage. But you know, as a church as a whole, we've, we've said some things and we've done some things against the gay and lesbian community that have not been God honoring. And I'm not saying anything specifically for us at New Life, but I think we recognize that we also have to have hearts of repentance. Not one of us are perfect. None of us come into this arena pure. We all have things and areas and hurts and habits that break with God's way. So I'm going to provide an opportunity in our prayer for that today, an opportunity for us to seek uh, reconciliation with God in those areas that you uh, personally need and for us even as, as a church. Let's pray. Lord, we're here to celebrate today. We've come into this space to connect with you in a way that's heartfelt, in a way that's real, to hear from your word that you would speak to us, uh, comfort where we need it, but also affliction when we need it too, God. And uh, I thank you that you do that. You speak into our lives daily as we open ourselves up to you. And so, Lord, for those who in our congregation maybe are facing difficult moments, whether it be physical Maybe their bodies are just really aching. We pray for them. Maybe their hearts are breaking because of situations in their life. We, we lift them up to you, God, and, and pray that you would comfort them. We pray for those that are confused. Maybe they're facing the choices and decisions they're not sure about. And we ask for wisdom. We ask for clarity. We ask you to show your hand of direction for them. And Father, we're committed to preserving marriages and so, Lord, we know it's not an easy road. And for those that are struggling, we just lift them up to you and ask God that you would continue to bring about your sense of peace, but also wisdom, forgiveness, healing, 
Father, that uh, you rose from the dead and the power of your spirit is real and lives are being changed to your glory. And so, Lord, I pray for marriages. I pray for us as a nation, God, that we would, as a church even, humble ourselves before you because we know, Lord, that uh, we don't do everything right. We have a history as a church of your church of failing and failing you and failing people. And for that, we repent. We, we ask for your forgiveness. And so, Lord, as we face issues in life, we face issues in this community, Father, that we see as contrary to your teaching, to your word, Lord, help us not to expect Christ-like behavior from people who are not Christ-like, that they're not following you. And so, Lord, help us instead to lift up your love You said, they will know you're my followers, my disciples, because of your love. And so, Lord, help us to love, but also help us to speak truth, but not in an unkind way. And so, Lord, we just give that whole situation to you and ask you for wisdom and guidance as your church. Lord, we want to pray for Braden Rowe as he's come through his surgery on his lateral meniscus. And we just thank you for the surgeon that worked on him. And we just ask, Lord, that his body would heal well and it would heal correctly. We're thankful for Alex, Penny and Charles Morrison's son, and that he's recovering from that tragic accident with his hand and his arm. And we're thankful that all his fingers were spared. Father, we, we celebrate with Lou and, and Carolyn and their 65th wedding anniversary. And, and Lord, as we celebrate marriage, we recognize them and we just want to celebrate along with them. Lord, we thank you for the Hispanic ministry that used our facility for 15 years of faithful service on Thursdays and Saturday nights. And now, Lord, they've determined to, to close that church And so we would just ask your continued blessing on the center of praise and prayer as they meet in uh, Twin Falls. God, just continue to strengthen that ministry that they may reach out into the Hispanic community and uh, touch people's lives. And finally, Lord, we pray for our military. We pray for those that are in law enforcement, for those that are seeking to come into situations where they're providing health care, emotional care, or whatever folks are in need of in this community. Lord, we ask you to protect them, not just physically, but emotionally as well. For they step into arenas where the worst of the worst can be. And yet, Lord, they provide help and so strengthen their hearts and their minds. Father, we ask this all in your precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the one in whom every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. At this time, our gifts and offerings will be received. And again, if you're here as a guest, please don't feel obligated to give your presence here in worshiping the Lord today as your gift to Him. Uh, But we do it out of an attitude of worship. Thank you. Flash across my TV screen. Another broken heart comes into view. Saw the pain and I turned my back. Why can I do the things I want to? I am willing, yet I'm so afraid. You give me strength when I say, I want to be your hands. Be your feet. I'll go where you send me. Go where you send me. Be your hands. I wanna be your feet. I'll go where you send me. Go where you send me, and I'll try. Yeah, I'll try. Touch the world like you touch my life, and I'll find. Your hands. 
I've abandoned every selfish thought I've surrendered everything I've got You can have everything I am And perfect everything I'm not I am willing, I'm not afraid You give me strength when I say want to be your hands be your feet. I'll go where you send me. Go where you send me. Be your hands. I want to be your feet. I'll go where you send me. Go where you send me. And I'll try. Yeah, I'll try. To touch the world like you touch my life. And I'll find. a lifetime I turn my back on you from now on I'll go so send me where you want me to I finally found a mission I promise I'll complete and I don't need excuses when I am your hands and feet I am your hands and feet Thank you, team, for that great song reminding us that I think all of us want to be uh, making a difference in the world. We don't want to just be here consuming up resources, breathing air, and not making an impact. I think God has wired in each one of us a desire to make a difference in the lives of other people. We've been asking the question on this journey of faith, what's your next step? You know, um, as you look around the room, you don't know where everybody's at spiritually. And I, even as a pastor, don't know where everybody's at spiritually. But I know that God has something for you. And he's not satisfied with where you're at today. Because you're still here, right? I mean, there comes a time where you will transition from this life to the next. And uh, that's when God's finished with you. And he brings you home in the place that he's prepared for you to enjoy his glory. But on this side of heaven, he's still working on you. He's still doing stuff in your life that's making you more and more like Jesus. Because that's really the goal. That's his goal for you in your life, is that you would live your life the way Jesus lived his life. And so as we ask this next step, God has put a call on your life and he's gifted you for ministry. He's gifted you for significance. He's gifted you to make a difference. The question is, Are you going to answer his call? I got a little video to show you that's going to demonstrate that for us. One call has the power to change our life forever. It can transform us from the inside out and lead us into a new future. Whether or not we answer the call is up to us. God calls each of us to something greater than ourselves. We're called to impact our world with the message and love of Jesus Christ. Equipping us all with gifts and talents, God gives us the tools necessary to accomplish His will. For God's gifts and His call can never be withdrawn. Hearing God's voice can be challenging. It doesn't always come as a loud ring, but can come as a whisper. Even when we don't feel God is speaking to us, He's there. Be the change you wish to see in the world. This statement is true, but an even greater truth is, be the change that God calls you to be in the world. Will you answer the call? I want you to imagine a place that connects people, first of all, with God. 
and then connects people with a family, a community of faith that helps them and encourages them to reach their full kingdom potential while being here on this planet, uh, in this place called Earth. Imagine that, you know, place because it's happening here. You know, here at New Life, we've grabbed the whole of our mission statement to glorify God and lead people in a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think a lot of you are past that mentality of, I've arrived in my faith. In other words, I'm comfortable where I'm at. Uh, Things are going okay. Um, I don't really need any more change or adjusting. I think we've, for most of you, you've reached that point where you said, no, I, I believe God has more for me. Uh, as long as I'm breathing, as long as I'm alive. And so we've put together a four-word strategy that's helping us to develop disciples. You know, Jesus created a movement. He did. He, He radically changed church because it was all about the temple and it was about all the religious laws and the duties of mankind to those laws. That's not how God set it up, but that's how what it became. And Jesus said, no, I give you a new command, and that is that you love one another. The world's going to know that you're my disciples by how you love each other. And that dramatic, he spoke to just a small group of people, and we're a product of that here today. It radically changed the way the world worked, the way governments work. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do, obviously. But as we talk about our four-word strategy, we started off with connect. Connect with God and heartfelt worship and a compelling Christian community. And so that's your first step. Wherever you are on this journey of faith is exploring about the reality of a God who loves you, a God who sought after you, a God who seeks to restore your life in his presence and through the cross of Jesus Christ, the death and the resurrection. That's how much he loved you. How far would he go to, cap- to recapture his relationship with you? All the way to a cross. That's how far. And then a compelling Christian community. So connecting with God and connecting with his church. And then last week we talked about growing. Growing and talked about tools and resources that help us grow and understanding his word more. And we determined that that happens best in relationships with other people, other broken, hurting people, because none of us are perfect. And so when we get in these life groups, and there's a brochure out there talking about men's groups and women's groups and uh, different studies that are going on and opportunities for you to connect, you're going to grow faster, better, and deeper when you're in relationship with other people. And then today we're talking about serving, and then next week we're going to talk about going and letting us be God's hands. And so today as we talk about serve, serve through sacrificial and generous living and giving. We want to be a church that's helping people to discover what those gifts are, the way God has wired you, the way he's shaped you. We want to deploy and we want to encourage and equip and come along and, and support you in that because there's a real joy in serving. You say, really? There's a joy in serving? Don't those words, they don't, make, they don't go together, do they? Because serving can be difficult and hard. And well, it can be. Indeed, it can be. But I'll just ask you the question. If your experience in volunteerism or serving has been laborious and not joyful, could it be you're out in the right spot? Could it be you're trying to do something because there's an obvious need there, but God didn't wire you that way? I mean, if you don't do well with babies, why are you volunteering in the nursery, right? So, and that's just one example, but just saying, hey, there's all kinds of opportunities the way God has wired you. Well, God's word is central to us here at New Life, and we're looking at 1 Peter chapter 4. So open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to read the first 11 verses, but our our message is really coming off of just verses 10 and 11. But I thought, let's let's read this whole section because my Bible gives the title, Living for God. And uh, so I just thought, let's read this whole thing because it's going to speak to us. God's word does that. It just speaks directly, clearly. But would you stand with me in honor of God's word being read publicly. It's one of the things we do here at New Life. God's word is central, and so when it's read publicly, we stand in honor of that. Thank you for standing. 
Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because he who has suffered in his body is done with sin. As a result, he does not live the rest of his earthly life for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They think it's strange that you do not plunge with them into the same flood of dispensation, and they heap abuse on you. But they'll have to give an account to him who's ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to men in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded, self-controlled, so that you can pray. And above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. And here's our key verses today. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves... You should do it with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. And to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. This is God's word. Go ahead and have a seat as we start unpacking this now together. And we see right away that, yeah, you're shaped for serving. And I know as when I was parenting, when our kids were little, we had one of these kind of toys where all the different shapes and sizes and colors and they all had to fit in the, the right spots and stuff. And so I thought I'd use that as an example because of the verse that we're each given gifts and we're crafted and created and shaped to serve in a particular way and in a particular way that God has designed us. We're, we're all different. And uh, so, but the goal that the Bible's really clear about is not to serve yourself, but to serve others. That's what God, the way God has put it together. So here's a thought, and I had it in our opening comments uh, as we came together this morning. You can take up space on earth, trying hard to find significance in your life. Just think about that line right there, trying to find significance in your life. Most people are trying. They really are. Or you can discover that God has created you for significance. God has created you, and he created you for significance. But not by yourself. Not that you're all that talented or whatever. Instead, let's let's talk about it. It's for serving others. And, And let's unpack this, that God has encouraged us to use our gifts to serve one another. And, and listen, sometimes when a, a sermon comes about gifts in the church, some people will react saying, oh, I'm just trying to fill some spaces. We're getting ready to you know, do some ministry and we need volunteers and all that. I get it. But you know what? That's the institutional church. And there's a part of that that, that is there because you do. You have different ministries. But here's our goal at New Life. It's not about that. It's about singleness of serving. It's about how God has gifted and created you. It may be in an area that we already have a significant ministry happening, but it might not be. What if God has designed you for something that we don't even offer or or that as a church we're not even involved with? Maybe God would use you to be the catalyst to cause us to bring out some resources, equipment, support, others who are like-minded to serve. We're, we're glad to explore those other areas. So believe me, it's not about institutional church and getting the roles filled. It's about where ministry partnership happens and we can joyfully serve in the area God has gifted us. You know, our discovery team and 
and the uh, consistory have put together some church-wide objectives for us. And so that's why this message series, for some of you, it's appeared very organizational. And it is because we're addressing the organization of New Life Community Church and our four-word discipleship strategy connect, grow, serve, go. And so we are unpacking that organizationally. But as they put these things together, one of the things they said is, you know, there are spiritual gift assessments. Because sometimes people sense or feel that you may be gifted, but you're not really sure. I mean, the Bible's very clear. Every one of you has at least one spiritual gift. But what is it? And as far as I know, sitting in a chair on Sunday morning is not a gift. I know, I know we want to plead that one, you know. Uh, I sit really well. Yeah, well, God has more for you than that. So one of the things we're doing is providing different tools in order to help you do that. And, and in the lobby at the Connect Center, Joanna has some books. And this is actually, there's three surveys in this one book. And you can pick one up for eight bucks. But over this next year, we're going to provide multiple opportunities for you to seek and discover how God has gifted you. For some, it may be just an affirmation of, ah, that's exactly what I thought. That's where I'm at. That's what I've been doing. And for others of you, it may be a whole enlightenment. I have no idea. I have no idea. So we're going to do some later in the year that are going to be online. You'll be able to do it. We're going to provide some sessions where you could come and do it in a group context. The one I'm holding up today is just a self-discovery. And so you can pick those up from Joanna for $8 uh, out in the Connect Center. Spiritual gifts. You know, uh, one of the things we talk about is how God has shaped us. And Rick Warren wrote a book, The Purpose Driven Life. Perhaps you have read it. And in there, he talks about how God has shaped us. And he takes that word as an acronym. So that's what's in your outline today. We're going to go ahead and spell out this this acronym. There's a lot of biblical references to the different gifts God has given his church. But in Ephesians, it says this. Now, there are gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And their responsibility is, do you know, to do all the work, right? No, that's not what the Bible says. Granted, we love doing the work, but their responsibility is to equip God's people, to do his work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. So God has appointed leaders in the church not to do the work by themselves, but to equip others. And why would that be? Why would that be God? Because you're going to grow more spiritually. You're going to connect with believers at a deeper level. You're going to give praise to God because of what he's doing in you and through you. Because if it's all dependent on you, well, then God, yeah, you, you give yourself praise. But when he puts you in a difficult spot or, or a, a place that pushes you a little bit more than what you thought, and you cry and ask him, and he's seeking him how he can strengthen you for that, and he comes through, and he shows you, and he does more than you could ever do by yourself in affecting lives and people around you. We've seen it. We've seen it happen here at New Life. So listen, if you said yes to, to God at some point in your life, He's gifted you. He's given you a gift. So congratulations. You're gifted. And uh, he desires that to be used to its fullest as well. So what's the H stand for? Heart. What do I love to do? You ask that question. What what do I love to do? And do it with my whole heart. Not haphazardly or on occasion. But really just grab a hold of where are some areas in my life that I just really love. My heart beats faster when this topic comes up. or, Or this experience happens. And I just find myself getting excited. Maybe you like to perform in front of people. Maybe you like to start things. Maybe you're the kind of person who's always got ideas. Maybe you like to finish things. You don't like seeing things left undone. Hey, I'll get in there. I'll take care of that. Maybe that's how God has wired you. You love to finish things. Maybe you look at something, you say, that could be done better. You like to improve things. Maybe you just love being with people. You're the party kind of a person. These are all things that God has designed you uh, to be, particularly with your heart. You know, probably like most people, you don't really take the time to sort it all out. So I just want to encourage you to do that. What do you love to do? And uh, Solomon, it talks about, and Solomon, my son, in First Chronicles, l- learn to know the God of your ancestors intimately. Worship and serve him with your whole heart 
and a willing mind. So then we go to abilities, right? What are your abilities? What natural abilities seem to, to come forward for you? Well, you know, sometimes people say, well, I don't really have any real abilities to offer, but nothing could be further from the truth. The, the key is matching your abilities with the right ministry. Uh, what natural abilities do I have? And Exodus says it this way, I have filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in what? All kinds of crafts. Are you a craftsman? You know, God, God has craftsmen all over the place. I mean, he is, he, look what he says about it. He's a master craftsman, expert in working with gold, silver, and bronze. You know, we had busy craftsmen at work here at New Life this last week. Are you able to see these screens really well? I mean, isn't that amazing? And even that video we showed, I mean, it's just clear and it's great. And those of you who are, had trouble seeing before, I hope you're saying, wow, I can really see now. Well, that comes from Christopher Stevenson and Pastor Doug and uh, even Brian Gailey. The hours and hours. I mean, it just looks like a simple screen. But let me tell you, there's two by fours behind that thing. It's a whole big structure. And to see those guys hoist that thing up there and mount it and measure I mean, it was a lot of hours and hours of work because they're craftsmen. You know, Christopher, several times, was, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. I'm like, it looks great. It's not right. You know? And he wanted it right because he's, he's a craftsman. He's a builder. And God is going to use that for years and years and years to come. So, so what abilities do you have? Do you like to teach? Do you like promoting things? Maybe you like to read. You like to research. Maybe cleaning is your thing. You, know? you like to clean stuff. But we want to match your abilities with the right ministry. And then we got personality. There are different kinds of service, but we all serve the the same Lord. There's different types of personalities. And so where does that help you to fit in? Are you the type of person who's outgoing or are you more introverted? You're more quiet. You like to be alone. Maybe you like routine. You just like, it's got to be the same. Or maybe you're like, man, that just drives me crazy. I need variety. I need things to change up and be different. Maybe you're self-controlled, very organized, very self-controlled. Maybe you're not quite so self-controlled and you kind of let things go and and, uh, very expressive. Or maybe you're cooperative or competitive, right? You get in a volleyball game and man, watch out, those spikes start coming. You know, you're very, you're just, that's just how you're wired. Others of you, you stand out there and you're just, you know, looking at the grass grow or whatever and having a good time, right? You're just, you're just wired differently. And our kids, you see that, right? And parent, I see parents all the time at the soccer field, you know, get the ball, you know, and their kids out there just having a good time, you know. So how are you wired personality? What's your personality like? And then finally, we're talking about experiences. What experiences in life have you had? Right? I mean, maybe that's one of the most overlooked factors in determining what ministry or how God would use you to touch the lives of other people around you for His glory and for His intended purpose. Your past experiences, particularly those that hurt. Those areas where there's been problems. Because we don't like to talk about those. But if God has helped you through something that, you know, was painful, difficult, hard, and God helped you through it and you stand victoriously where you are now. The Bible is very clear. God brings you through those things so that you can speak into the lives of other people. But you, you have to be vulnerable. And I know it's a risk, isn't it? It's a real risk. Because when people find out information about you where you have failed in the past, sometimes they'll hold it up against you. Or you, fa- you feel your relationship's going to change. But yeah, isn't it interesting in God's perspective that it's those hurts, those habits, and those hang-ups that you have or have had. And through His grace and power of His Spirit at work in you, you've achieved victory over. And He would use those very things to affect people around you for His glory. And make, help them make those, those life changes. And so I know I'm asking a lot of you when I ask you to be vulnerable. Paul says it this way, we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So if you really 
want to be used by God, you have to understand this very powerful truth. And that is that your life experiences, even those that you regret, but you've overcome with God's help, they can be some of the greatest pieces in helping other people. So there they are. Spiritual gifts, heart, abilities, personality, and experiences. And what do we say? We say, God, this is the way I'm wired. Help me understand it even more. And all that I am, I give to you. And I want you to use me. I want to place myself in that spot, God, where you would use me. All the gifts you've given me, you've called me for ministry, you've saved me for ministry, right? You've called me into ministry, and you've commanded me to be in ministry. And so here at New Life, we want to be about getting the right people in the right places for the right reasons at the right time. It's not about filling in the gaps. We've got some great leadership opportunities, though. And they're listed there in your, your outline. One is uh, with our life groups. We, as a church-wide objective, want to see more. We want to see a few more that are being developed. Maybe God would have you be leading one of those where you have people over into your home and you pick a study. We have a number of studies out there uh, in our cafe, in the bookshelf. Or maybe just be a host. You just provide. That's what you do. I'm a host and I just provide the space. Someone else can lead it, but I'll make the snacks and we have a comfortable home. Invite people over. Right? So uh, then there's also kids connection. You know, God has been bringing us more children. And we've been praying for that. But now we want to restart our kids connection ministry on Sunday mornings for those first through sixth grade. And maybe that's something that God has wired you for. And I just ask you to take a look, pray about that. Uh, There's a ministry description out there in the Connect Center, and there's a little bit more information about that. Maybe you want to partner with somebody and help us lead that where kids get to know God's Word and get to know the author of God's Word in a very real and powerful way in their lives. We also have our family night ministry, and that's right, we've established a new goal. You know, last year we had probably uh, one adult per every 20 kids. <laughs> it was challenging, and we want to get it down to one on eight. That means a lot more of you need to volunteer and be a part. But again, it's not just about uh, being uh, put in a hole or put in a position. If you love kids and you want to be with kids and teach them God's word, we've got a spot for you. If you like playing games with kids, we've got a spot for you. You like to cook or maybe you like to clean and wash dishes. We've got a spot for you where on Wednesday nights you can come and be a part of a team of people that gather for prayer and that God is using to change these kids' lives and affect their families for his glory and for his honor. We're seeing incredible things happen. So consider a few of those. Those are just some opportunities that are, that are coming up uh, for, for you to get engaged and involved. But if a task isn't comfortable for you, then tell us. Let us know. And we'll look at how and where we could repurpose you, reposition you, seek out where it would be. Defining success biblically. Let's wrap it up with this. Based on the Bible, there's a couple of components that you want to be sure that you recognize as success in finding your spiritual gift. The first one is faithful. The master replies, well done, good and faithful servant. Don't you want to hear that from the lips of Jesus when you transition from this life to the next? You've done well in all that I've given you. Fruitful. This is to my Father's glory. Let's not forget that. I hope you heard me say it over and over again. It's not about your glory. It's about God's glory. This is about God's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples and then fulfilled. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you. That's why we use the term joyful service and that your joy may be full. Faithful, fruitful, fulfilled, and finally making God famous. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all those to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Amen. So I've got one more video to to show you. And this one is a video that talks about gifts that are unopened.
open yours. So yeah, and as we wrap up here now, this is the last verse. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know, next week we're going to be talking about our fourth step as we think about glorifying God and leading people in a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's all about going. Going and spreading the good news. Next week, our New Life Youth Missions team will be commissioned to go. And they're going to be heading out to uh, Western Idaho, to Nez Pierce uh, Reservation. They'll be doing some work. There's some information in your program or your bulletin about that. As well as um, there's an event coming to Twin Falls, uh, an outreach ministry that we want to uh, encourage promotion of. And so Phil Fowler will be coming and sharing with us a little bit more about that Somebody Loves You outreach that's going to be happening on the campus of CSI um, in August. So let's, uh, let's close our time now in prayer together. God, I want to thank you that you created us. I want to thank you that you have shaped us and that you love us unconditionally. It's an incredible love that we, we want to reflect as a church, we want to reflect as individuals, that you would love us not based on our talents or our abilities or our spiritual gifts, or a personality, or what we look like, or how much money we have, but you love us because you created us. And you created us because you want a relationship with us. And so God, as we sit here in this air-conditioned building and we hear the, the voice of a child, Father, we're just thankful for this moment. I pray that, that many people, even those who are, who are missing today or who may over this next year, Lord willing, be joining us, and we'll discover our shape and how you've gifted us, that we'll understand that the, the experiences of life are just not excess baggage, and that we're just not here to consume resources and live life die and it's done but that we can make a difference with your help that we can help change the world oh it may be just a little space a little spot a little moment one life God your Holy Spirit is our guide and you are the one who gives us eyes to see and so open us spiritually open our eyes and our hearts in those areas we long to make an impact so that we may be surprised at what you would have for us but even for others. We pray that we hear your Spirit's voice and that we have the courage to follow your leading. Thank you for your love. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us? We bow our hearts We bend our knees Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh, Lord, we cast down our idols. So give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another give us clean hands give us pure hearts let us not lift our souls to
Again, if you're here as a guest today, we're just glad you carved out some time and spent it with us. See Joanna in our Connect Center, and uh, if you have any questions more about New Life Church or about the ministries we offer, she'll help you there. Um, We're just glad that you were here today. New Life is so much more than this one an hour and ten minutes or yeah, 10 minutes, and so there's a lot of activity in your programs. Take advantage of that opportunity, but keep coming back. And the reason why is God's ways work. They really do. So here's what he says, Peter says to us, and God would say to you, you are a chosen people. You're a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation, a people that belong to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you receive mercy. Let's go in the power and the strength and the passion of Christ. Amen.